welcome to the Industry Angel Podcast. We hear from the best business minds across the globe, entrepreneurs, social influencers, marketing mavens, and sales rock stars. We've got them all. Here comes your weekly dose of inspiration with your host, Ian Farah. Welcome to episode 199 of the Industry Angel from a sunny South Shields here on the beautiful Northeast Coast. We're clinging on to the high temperatures as autumn kicks in. I'm not a fan of the cold. So nearly at 200, 200 episodes. And uh, thanks for watching our live streams of late. We'll be doing a lot more video actually, which, uh, which all can be watched on industryangel.com. We're going to be live streaming episode 200 actually on November 19th at 6 o'clock UK time and evening of course, I'm not getting up early and I'll be at the local brewery here in South Shields with a guest host, Chris Donovan, who will be turning the tables and interviewing me. We're going to be talking about standout guests, the show's impact, my journey and of course anything that you all want to ask. You can submit a question or a comment and uh, you can do that through email, host at industryangel.com and we'll pick them all up or you could just tweet us and uh, hopefully we'll grab them. I hope you're all safe and well. It's another lockdown here in the UK and we've got a couple of weeks left, hopefully before the country reopens again and we can enjoy a good Christmas together. So keep the faith, you, you've got this. Um, okay then, so let's hear from today's guest. Today we have the director of the Kendall Mountain Festival. Welcome to the Industry Angel, Steve Scott. Hi Ian, pleased to be here. Good man, I'm pleased to have you here because uh, I've just been checking out the Kendall Mountain Festival website from afar and it's obviously not a physical event now and it's all gone online, yeah? It's all gone online. It's been a, a huge challenge for the team, but we're pleased to say we, we ran a bit of a test event. We had a UK premiere of a film um, from the US last night and it, it went down really well. So I think we had over four or 500 people tuning into that. So, um, so far so good, but we've obviously got the big launch next week and, and a huge amount of content to get out there. Oh, fantastic. I mean, we spoke offline, then you said you tested it last night, and I presumed it was just a test between you and your colleagues, but you, you pushed it out wide for a test. Oh, yeah, yeah. We like to throw ourselves in the deep end at Kendall. <laughs> I guess that goes hand in hand with being outdoor folk, really. But uh, no, no, obviously, we've, we, we, we've planned this for, for months now. And um, yeah, it, it went well, thank goodness. A few little glitches, but that, you know, we're in, we're in a new world, aren't we, at the moment? So well, you touched upon there about the outdoor world. So, you know, why, why don't we kind of go back? I mean, the Kendall Mountain Festival, was it 40 years now it's been going? Or? Exactly, yeah. It started oh. in 1980, initially by sort of six outdoor people, mountaineers ostensibly, who were really trying to raise money for expeditions. And it, and it just ran in a couple of pubs in Kendall. And, um, you know, it was quite a sort of low-key event until today where we we now attract upwards of 18 to 20,000 people physically come to the town every November and it's seen as the sort of gathering if you like the hub for the outdoor industry for filmmakers for writers for outdoor adventurers so if you if you enjoy walking your dog or going up on the fells or climbing or skiing or biking you know there's something for everybody here there's nature writing as well it's become a huge huge event so what, come on, tell me a bit more about the events because, I mean, I love all this. We, we love going to the lakes ourselves and doing all the running and riding and biking and everything. So yeah, yeah. So that's it, basically. Everybody comes across? So so as far as the event's concerned, we've got over 200 films in competition. We had a, uh, 400 films entered this year from all over the world. And then we've got a speaker roster of around 100 people. Now, most of these are, are going to be online interviews, but we, we're also building a, a live stream, a sort of broadcast TV style stage, obviously with all the COVID regulations in place, um, where we can have some people live each night during the festival for, for chat. So we've got some great names online or physically at the event as well. So in the past, Steve, everybody would have, would have came to Kendall or, or across there? Yeah, absolutely. People travel from all over the world. You, you can't get a, a hotel or an Airbnb for love no money in town, certainly in the region. Uh, Kendall brings 
I guess we're bringing in three to four million pounds to the local economy. So, you know, it's a huge, huge input into into the region. But obviously this year, a huge loss to the economy as well, which is not good news, really. So would it have been sort of, yeah, you would have had a, you know, maybe a, a bike ride schedule, a triathlon and, and, and a, what, that kind of just events all the time? Well, there's events, but um, mm-hmm. certainly there's stuff physically to do. So we do a, a 10K trail run that leaves, you know, we close the town centre down and it goes up on Scout Scar above Kendall and back into town, which the public love. And we, we attract, you know, around 700 runners for that. There's, there's bike rides, you know, ride outs, but... Really, these physical events just sort of wrap around a very strong cultural stream of content, and and that is the biggest film program and speaker program of anything of its kind in the world. You know, we have the the best films you could imagine entered into Kendall, and some of the most inspirational speakers. And they're not all big names. You know, they're often everyday people who've done incredible things, and we we love to uncover these people at, at Kendall. So you know the the films then is is there an award, Steve? Like do people put a you know create a film yeah. and the, the enter it and hopefully kind of win an award on the having the best film in that particular genre or something? Exactly. Yeah, good question. I think it's it's often known as the Oscars of outdoor film or the BAFTAs. I think we need to wow. re- remain British in that sense. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we have a uh, twelve twelve categories and a people's choice category as well. So they're they're beautiful trophies as well, handcrafted by a. A mountaineering legend, Andy Parkin, who now lives in Shamia, a British fella. He's also an artist, but he, he sort of collects scrap metal from the glasses around Chamonix every year and crafts these beautiful film trophies that, you know, the prestigious in, in industry and, and rightly so. Wow, that sounds amazing. So, the, yeah, they the, the sound very prestigious because they'd be rare. They are rare, the collector's items. <laughs> and also we've made a little film this year about about them being made and about Andy. So... That's going on our website next week as well. So keep your eye out for that. So it's a lovely little film of him making them and in his workshop in Chamonix. It's really lovely to see what the work that goes into these. So, you know, we, we try and think about everything that the festival touches, you know, to, to have that sort of quality and creativity behind it. You must have had to get your heads together pretty early on this one. So obviously it's every November. So last November, you know, the pandemic wasn't around I think it was probably the first quarter of the you know of this year you know February March you started feeling it. When did the when did the kind of plan of action kick in where you just thought this is not going to happen? We're going to have to take this online. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like so many people out there this year, we've we've had to quickly adapt to 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 our planning um, and the shifts in planning from obviously government directives and the state of the nation. And um, we had planned probably four months ago to do a hybrid event. You know, we had foreseen that there would possibly be some element of a live audience at Kendall fused with with online content. So that was our our ideal scenario where we could bring some people in, you know, have a third capacity in venues and sort of mitigate against some of that ticket loss, physical, you know, visitor loss at, at the event. But certainly in the last, you know, couple of months, we, we the writing was on the wall. We could see things were getting worse councils were getting a bit more nervy about us bringing anybody into town so we, we quickly made that decision to shift and invest in a, a really big out you know online platform for the event you mentioned about the you know the drop in in revenue you know bringing into the local economy then have you been able to tap into a grants is, is something being put in place to try to fill a hole maybe and help you help you guys on with this yeah of course um jackie my wife who's our ceo has been incredibly proactive in finding the backup grants and, and different funding streams for the company. Um, and, you know, some of the investment we had from last year, we've we've sewn into the the uh, online platform. So in a sense, we're, we're shoring up the company, obviously, until a month or so ago, some of the staff were furloughed. We worked with a fair few freelancers, but the sort of transition into, into a sort of full working model and investing in this new digital platform isn't wasted really because we're planning to um, to launch a, an online TV channel next year and I guess if anything it's probably kicked us into moving a lot faster in, into that into that area. I've seen a lot of businesses Steve that have done that you know they've had to put the infrastructure in place that might have been on the back burner yeah might have been something that was a nice to have but now suddenly they've been forced to do it and it's there so you know it, it's it's forced to hand so so going forward then the the festival will be physical and online as well. 
Yeah, I think you're right. I think this isn't going to go away. I think what we've built here is a really exciting new new platform for a, an event the scale of ours where, you know, a town of Kendall, I think it's roughly around 26,000 people live here, has a certain capacity and we can't just keep increasing exponentially the size of the event every year. So, you know, we had rapid growth three or four years ago, 20% year on year. We quickly realized that we, we were running out of venues, people were running out of accommodation. So having this this online opportunity will enable us to, you know, to go globally with our brand, if you like, with our organization and reach a lot more people, which obviously is is of great interest to us. So what does success look like for the, for this particular year then, Steve? You know, it can't be a mix. It has to be solely online. And, you know, I guess it's got to wash its own face in terms of the revenue it brings in. So is it is it a ticket event? Do people buy a ticket and it allows them to then view things online? Yeah, the beautiful thing about Kendall is that there's something for all budgets. You know, there's a lot of free content. We really believe in reaching out to communities, to schools, young people, families. For example, our family adventure sessions are always free of charge at Kendall on the Saturday and the Sunday mornings. You know, they they cost us thousands to put on, but we really believe in, in sowing the seeds of outdoor engagement. Now, that's whether you want a family to interact with our content or to go out into the into the hills for the first time, you know, for their well-being. We really believe in, in sowing the seeds early. So there's a huge amount of free content, but the, the sort of revenue model is on festival passes this year. So you can buy an access all areas pass for, I think it's £96. And then you can buy individual film passes. But the, you know, the £96 value is incredible, really, when you think of what it would normally cost to, to cover everything at the event. And, and the other advantage, if you like, of online is that you can watch the content throughout Christmas up until the end of December. So all the stuff that you probably miss at the, the live festival, you can sit at your leisure with your family and watch it at home, you know, long after the festival is finished right until the end of the year. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. It's a bit like going to Glastonbury and like them being five stages and you're seeing someone on one stage, but you're missing the other four, where now you can watch again and, and capture everything. Exactly. That's my biggest regret running an event, um, and my team, my colleagues here will no doubt agree. I, I miss so much of the, the festival that we design and create during the year. I'm always really gutted to find out that I missed, you know, a once in a lifetime opportunity to see it could be somebody in conversation on stage, or it could be a, you know, an interview um, with a filmmaker, or yeah, there's so many things you miss at the event that you think, ah. Oh, it's gone. I've missed it, you know, and it wasn't recorded. So the, again, this is, I guess, the the silver lining, if you like, in all the, the dark clouds that we're wading through at the moment. I can hear the passion in, in your voice there when you, you got a bit excited thinking about that. So just tell me a bit about your background then, Steve. So why, why are you involved in this? What, why, why does this, you know, really set you off? Yeah, I think, um, well, my background is eclectic, um, to say the least. I, I was a professional skier as a young young man, was aiming for you know, the Olympic team was my goal. I didn't get there. It was it was still a, a journey that took me through the ski racing community. And then I got into teaching and coaching to a high level. And uh, it, it, it enabled me to travel the world, you know, fast track to a few years. And then I, I bought an adventure sports school in the French Alps in a place called Alpe d'Huez. You might have heard of it from the, the Tour de France. And uh, we, had a, we had a sort of an adventure sports school myself and a French mountain guys uh, there for about six, seven years. Um, I lived in the Alps for going on 15 years. So um, it was a big part of my life. And, you know, I became quite skilled in a, a lot of things, I guess, just from having to do it for a job and, 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 you know, qualifying in different areas, whether it's flying paragliders or ice climbing or all the rest of it. So it was, it was, a, it was a great lifestyle. It was, it was still, you know, a challenge to keep the business running. And it took me all over the world. And then I s was coaching in Norway for a chunk of my life. Again, this was quite unusual for them to have a British guy coaching some young skiers in, in Oslo. And uh, that, that sort of kept me busy. But parallel to that, I ended up working in marketing to, um, to earn some extra money because there wasn't a lot of money in, in skiing in Norway because they all do it so well, I guess. So I ended up working for a big American publishing company and managed managed to convert their market in Norway and Iceland and made a success of that for them. So I, I sort of parallel worked in the publishing world and, and uh, ski coaching as well and ended up coming back to the UK after about four and a half years in Scandinavia. 
It sounds like you've seen some exciting stuff and had some great experiences. And yeah, yeah, well, that, that's the that's the short version. There's a lot of, lot of stuff has happened, and yeah, um, yeah, coming back to Kendall was was a coincidence. I'm actually from the Northern Lakes, from Keswick originally. So I came back to Kendall, ended up working for a team development and a creative events company, and it was all about development training and. I guess because of my coaching background fused with my passion with I, I've always had a passion for design graphic design and ended up being taught by a through the publishing channel in Scandinavia by a really good designer in Norway who said oh you've got a talent you should do this and I just followed that that route and ended up teaching myself graphic design got a job for this company convinced them that I could set up a creative marketing mechanism and they became the world's top uh, creative team building company catalyst before before the market crashed all those years ago and uh they were doing really well. They're still doing well. They've got you know offices all over the world, and I helped them build the, the sort of the creative side of the company, and ended up delivering some of their team development events to big corporates around the world. So it's really really strange. And then through through the my connection, someone recommended me to the Kendall Mountain Festival back in 2004, and it was it was one of those things where people knew of my outdoor background and um, also fused with design and branding and marketing. Um, I I helped the the festival sort of raised the bar a bit and visually and through their marketing materials and ended up being invited to be a, a director, you know, probably five, six years after that. Sounds like the perfect fit. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, as a creative type, Steve, I think sometimes it's a bit like this podcast. Okay. Sometimes it's a little bit self-indulgent for me because I'll, I'll get somebody in the podcast who I'm really interested in. And I do like the answer of the audience, of course, and, and certain topics and speakers, but sometimes I get somebody on, I'm dead excited to, to have them on the show. What, what about you with, with the festival this year, Steve? Is there anybody that you're really excited to see? Oh gosh, there's so many people, so many speakers um, we've, we've got <laughs> lined up. I mean, personally, I'm going to be interviewing on stage Leverson Woods and he's talking about his, his conservation work, you know, he's walking with the elephants uh, series that he's just done on Channel Four, which was fantastic. So we'll be mainly talking about ele- elephant conservation and his passion for for Africa, really. So I'll be interviewing um, Levison on stage. I'll also be presenting Snow Night because of my background. I I sort of helped build these what we call the specialist sessions at Kendall. So for those communities who love snow sports or mountain biking or running, fell running. Um, or you know, distance running or road biking. Um, we've got all these what we call specialist sessions, which are an eclectic mix of film and guest speakers. And you know, sometimes in the live event, people win win gear. It's just a really good celebration of those disciplines. And I co-present uh, Snow Night, which is always a, a really great show where we bring in guests from around the world. So this year we've got Xavier De La Rue, who's probably one of the world's best known big mountain free ride snowboarders. He snowboards down things that people will be terrified of climbing up on these big, big range mountain mountains around the world. Um, I'm also interviewing, you know, Jason Fox from Foxy. SS yeah. Who Dares. Yeah, Foxy. Yeah. Uh, with Aldo Kane, who's a friend of mine, uh, who's also been been on TV. A lot of these guys are experts in sort of remote location filming and, you know, extreme environments. So, I really look forward to getting those two on stage and, and interviewing them. That that will be entertaining, I'm sure. Uh, I feel in safe hands, you know, ex-Special Forces guys. You wouldn't mess with them. So definitely going to have fun with those guys. And, yeah, there's just so many things. The Literature Festival with all the, the nature writing that's coming through this year. Some of the authors on that list we've got speaking are phenomenal. And then the films, gosh, where do we start on 200 films that we've selected and whittled down from 400? It is, you know, it's a it's a joy to see all this coming together. You know, the team working with me here in Kendall are just phenomenal. It's some fantastic names you've dropped there, and it, and it does sound like it's going to be amazing. So I, I guess sponsors then, Steve, you, you, you must have quite a, quite a, a large range of sponsors who want to get involved in something like this, just for the kudos and the, the, the size of it. Yeah, yeah, it's become a real industry gathering as well, Kendall. You know, normally we build this massive, what we call base camp. So this year, again, we, we thought, well, we still want to retain the engagement for, for the outdoor industry. We we play quite a strong role within that where where a lot of the outdoor brands and, you know, non-outdoor brands can interact with, I guess, an outdoor loving public, you know, interact with the end users. So we've we've created a virtual base camp. It launches next Friday where you can go on screen and, and click on the, the areas of, of the base camp and click on the brands and in, in their section, if you like, they've got stacked content and stories and films and ways to engage with the public. Um, some of them running competitions, 
so yeah, it's full of full of content from them, and it's a very important channel for them to engage with end consumers as well. So you know, when you do an event, do you literally you end in November? Do you start planning for the next year straight away? Totally, it is the uh, <laughs> it's the ongoing ongoing thing, really. In fact, we're in some ways we plan two years ahead for different elements if we've got speakers that we know we can't get in. But yeah, we're already planning planning for next year. And uh, one thing that's grown very quickly for us is our live tour so we we run a uk tour unfortunately we had we had 40 dates unfortunately we only got nine of them done before the pandemic did its thing um so we want to resurrect that next year hopefully all of us will get some form of normality back next year where we we can run the tour again and that really is like a condensed version of the festival that we take out on the road so we have guest speaker the mix of the best film from the festival our brand partners throw out lots of goodies to the audience. You know, people can win, you know, decent kit on, on stage. And it's often very moving. Some of the speakers we get can, you know, really make a difference to people's perceptions or connections. And, you know, of, often a lot of our people have overcome difficulties, whether that's you know, mental health or gender bias or, you know, it sometimes is a, is a really good leveler listening to these people and they've used the outdoor environment for you know in a cathartic way if you like so for healing and for you know well-being so uh, not just for this sort of objective of you know climbing a peak or or becoming the fastest or furthest you know it's um it's really interesting to to unravel some of these stories through Kendall. Yeah, you know, it's really inspirational, isn't it, when you when you hear some of these stories. And I think what you what you're kind of alluding to there is like sometimes you don't need to be the fastest or need to set yourself a target to to break a world record. It's our limit is our limit. And you know, I love I, I often talk about this when I'm speaking. I love the um, the strap line from Nike, "Just Do It." Yeah, because basically, it kind of encapsulates everybody, no matter as you say, gender or any any abilities or anything. And you just have to get out there and do what you can do and your limit is your limit and is that something that you kind of want to capture within this that you know everybody can play a part and everyone can can do it yeah and I think what we've all seen is everybody's um, seen the increased engagement in outdoor during during lockdown people have been getting out more I guess we've all had more time to to go on a walk go for a run um, just connect with the outs- outdoor space and a big theme in, in Kendall every year of, of environmental content. So we have lots of activists, if you like, to to use Kendall ostensibly, which is a great platform for lots of different people to share their stories and speak. You know, this year we've well every year we have a we have a central theme. This year the theme is nurture, which we planned way back in in January. So if you look at our, we've got a new trailer film that we we created um, for the festival. Every year we have a trailer, and this film is called only weather this year and it really has been designed with the lockdown pandemic story in mind that the sort of premise of the film is that we're all taking a step back having a a moment in our lives to take stock to breathe to assess our our journeys if you like and that's often a good thing it's given a lot of people some space and some time to you you know to, to consider where where they're going and I think if you watch our trailer and listen to the narration that we've done for that it'll all become self-explanatory really it's really poignant i I saw some fantastic footage actually on the website um i think it might just be actually the splash video that you see when you roll and there was a guy tight roping between two rocks yeah high lining that's called yeah yeah it looked like quite desert style and it was was it free was it was no ropes attached was he um some people crazily do it like exactly like free you know like a free solo climber Climbs without ropes. Some some slack liners, or when they go a certain height above ground, it's sort of called it's called high lining. And there are some people that will do that super high risk. Some people do it with um, like a base jump parachute rig on their back as well, in case they do fall off. They've got time to deploy a parachute. But yeah, oh yeah, you've got you ha- you've got the extremes at Kendall, of course, and, and these people who are pushing the boundaries in every level. They often come and share those stories, whether it's on film or you know physically at the event. But like you say, it's it's often you know it's often the everyday stories. You know, people using cold water swimming, um, outdoor swimming for for well being, and how it's shifted um, people's perceptions of just getting out into the environment, how it makes them feel good, even throughout winter. You know, we've got a big team of people here who, in our team, who who love cold water swimming. I'm a bit of a wuss on that one. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm really not a winter cold water swimmer, certainly without a wetsuit as they do it, and they, 
they sit in their down jackets in the office for about two hours in the morning to warm up, but they're definitely buzzing. I can see the benefits that it brings them. So, yeah, um, I'm full of admiration for them. I'm with you on that one. I used to surf quite a lot, but I, I even look at now the North Sea and think, how on earth did I step my foot in there when I was a boy? <laughs> <laughs> at least we, yeah, we wetsuits are the norm, though, aren't they, in the North Sea? Oh, for sure. Swimming in the Lake District in in, uh, in your swimming trunks or costume, <laughs> then, gosh, yeah, it takes a certain person to do that. When you're having live events, and you know, I, I love going to conferences, I love going to speakers, uh, see speakers. I'm a member of the Professional Speakers Association, and I've got a lot of friends that speak, and they're very inspirational. And what I love is that when you go to these conferences, you can kind of pop your hand up and you can ask a question. With this online, Steve, is the facility there for someone to ask the speaker a question and get involved? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, what we've done is we've set up a a question zone on on um, around each guest speaker, so you can send questions in before before the session, so we can we can collate the you know the, what we think are the best questions to ask them in that show. So uh, yeah, there's there's means of sending in your questions once you've you know bought a ticket to a certain guest speaker, and you know we'll, we'll make sure the best ones are read out. I think the the challenge obviously this year is because we have such a huge program is some of our content will be recorded. And then broadcast on a certain date. All all the specialist sessions will be going out live. So so they'll be every night from eight eight p.m. But a lot of the guest speakers are being recorded. Yeah, it sounds like you're going to inspire quite a lot of people during this festival. Then, so let's get to the crux. Then, how do we say it, Steve? Well, you go on the website kendallmountainfestival.com, and everything's on there. Get your tickets, all the different options. You can see what's on. You can look at the trailer film. You can even view the program online. You can just click on it, and uh, it opens up in front of your eyes on the screen. And um, yeah, just browse browse the, the hundreds of things that we've got going on during the event, and something for everybody. Um, uh, yeah, you won't you won't be disappointed. That's for sure. I can see this actually being quite an annual thing then going forward. As you see, you've put all this infrastructure in place now. And, you know, next year, if everything goes well, you can have both physical and online. And you have people from all over the world chipping in and, and, and being able to be a part of it. Yeah, definitely. We've we've noticed just, just recently because of the, the media suddenly getting really interested in what we've got. I guess in the, in, in the community, we've got a really strong name. You know, globally, we're, we're highly respected. But... I guess the general public, there's a lot of people around the country who've never heard of us. You know, I guess outdoor is quite niche. But I think this this shift will certainly bring us to a wider audience. And, and, and you know, that's our intention. It's not an exclusive event. It's very inclusive. And, you know, we've got things where we're exploring topics such as inclusivity and diversity in outdoor, which is predominantly white. Or, you know, we've got young environmental activists talking about the use of social media to get to get their message out so there's you know we go in depth in a lot of ways at Kendall as well it's not it's not just all surface feel good stuff so yeah it's something for everyone for sure yeah you're doing something special I, I love that that you've got that focus and obviously you, you can you can hear the values that you have probably as a board as well as I can imagine you guys sitting around plan this and, and coming up with some of these values that you want to try to project onto the festival yeah, I think what you're noticing in society at the moment, are huge shifts, whether that's politically, sort of environmental crisis is, is impacting on a lot of things. And, and I think any, any business or organization has to, be, has to be mindful of that, has to shift their, their values if, if necessary, it has to be sensitive to the audience or the market shifts as well. If, if you don't, it's, it, it could be a, a dangerous thing. And I think you, know, you, have to, you have to walk the talk, you have to genuinely believe in, in what you're about so we we genuinely believe in using the outdoor environment for pleasure but also for our livelihoods and if we don't protect that then you know we, we're hypocritical um it, it's a fine line because we work with a lot of corporate brands as well and i'm a believer in if, if we bring them on board we're making them think about their impact as well so it's about that collective influence that we have that's that's a great point because your support as your sponsors need to need to match with you as well yeah and a lot of them are a lot of them are real pioneers in in uh, inclusivity, diversity, and sort of environmental sustainability. Um, moving towards you know full circle uh, manufacture recycling, you know closed loop manufacture. It's it, it's really interesting to see where that's going with a lot of our, our brand partners. We've got you know we've got Volvo who are talking about the electric range, about safety, but also about repurposing. Um, components back into vehicles so 
we we believe that you know life has to go on. We can't all stop living in in a society that is very forward thinking. But also, I think some of the methodologies have to change and shift. And um, we're, we're seeing you know more and more more brand partners come on board. Excellent, fantastic. So, Steve, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. I'm so excited for you. You've innovated. You've changed this. You've took it online. Uh, KendallMountainFestival.com. Have you got social channels as well? Can can we see on the socials what you've been up to? Yeah, just search Kendall Mountain Festival on Instagram and Facebook. You, you'll see it all there. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's constant news updates going online. And um, yeah, spread spread the word, share the adventure, as we say in our strap line. It's very much about sharing Kendall. And if we can inspire someone to to engage with us, to get outside and and uh, you know do some interesting stuff, then then I think that's our job done. And it's the 19th of November. And if someone was listening to this, Steve, and it was maybe a couple of weeks' time, they can still go back on a register and watch again. Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. You can buy tickets right up until the end of the year because that's the thing. When you, you get in the mindset of a physical event, you're sort of restricted by those time frames and those venue slots. Whereas actually in the digital realm, the, the festival starts on the 19th, but you can engage with it right up until the end of the year. So if you get sick of Santa and the Elves or Home Alone, then I think Kendall's a good old, a good alternative. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, you have a blast and enjoy presenting and interviewing all those fantastic, inspirational people. And uh, maybe I'll see you physically next November at Kendall. Yeah, I think you'd love it. And uh, thanks so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Thanks to Steve Scott there, a fine example of innovating due to COVID and, of course, ensuring that events still go on we've still got to keep going on and of course the Kendall Mountain Festival the 40th anniversary as well a remarkable achievement so many people inspired across the decade so well done to all the team and of course speaking of milestones as you may remember next week is episode 200 so I'd love you to join us join us live we'll be having a lot of fun so until then I'm Ian Farrah this is the Industry Angel and thanks for listening Thank you.